Hey guys, this is Trevor Sullivan coming to you with another video and today we are going to be talking about the system.environment class and how to use that from PowerShell to set environment variables in the Windows operating system on a permanent basis either for your user account or for the entire system globally. So I want to draw your attention first to the .NET documentation for the system.environment class and show you the method that we are going to take a look at. So a lot of you probably are familiar with how to obtain environment variables from PowerShell just using $env colon and then the name of the environment variable. But what if you want to set an environment variable uh, permanently for your user account so that it persists reboots of the operating system. Um, it spans multiple processes uh, so you don't have to set that every time that you restart your PowerShell session. So if we take a look at the methods on the system.environment class, we actually have a static method. Uh, and static methods basically just mean that you don't have to instantiate the system.environment class. You can just call the method directly on it, and we'll take a look at how to do that in just a moment. But there are two overrides here, uh, two, diff two different method signatures that you can use to invoke the set environment variable method, and that is going to allow you to either set an environment variable on a per process basis. So if we pass it a string, or sorry, two strings, the name of the environment variable and the value of the variable, then it's just going to store it for the current process. But in our case, we want that to persist across processes, persist reboots, and uh, apply potentially to all users who are logged into a system. So to do that, we need to look at the second signature of the set environment variable method that again takes a string, which is the variable name, a second string, which is the value the value to assign to that variable. And then third, we have this environment variable target parameter, and it's of type environment variable target. And that environment variable target is actually a .NET enumeration, and it just has machine process or user. So we can basically specify if it's going to be a machine level variable that applies to all users and persists reboots, or if we want to set it at the user level. And it even tells us where exactly in the registry it's actually setting it. But this is just providing kind of a wrapper API to that registry location. So let's take a look at how to call this from PowerShell and how it changes the behavior. So if I fire up a PowerShell session right here, and I take a look at env, let's say, first name, you'll see it's, it's empty, right? Because that environment variable just does not exist at the moment. So what if I did $env first name equals Trevor? OK, that's great. So now I've got this environment variable called first name, and it's set to Trevor. But what happens if I bring up another PowerShell session and I do $env colon first name? Well, as you can see, that environment variable that I set in the first PowerShell process did not persist over to the second one. So we're going to use this method to set the environment variable at either the user or machine level, and that'll allow it to persist across processes, etc. So to reference the system.environment class, we put that in square brackets. So I'm just using uh, Microsoft Visual Studio Code here. I also have the PowerShell extension installed. I'd, I'd strongly recommend that you guys also install VS Code and install the PowerShell extension. It's a great extension. It gives you syntax highlighting and all that fun stuff. And when you create a new file, just do Control K M and then search for language mode PowerShell. And that's going to enable the syntax highlighting features and the auto completion and all that fun stuff. So we'll do system.environment. So that's our class name. And we're going to put that in square brackets. And then remember, the set environment variable method is actually a static method, not an instance level method. So to 
to typically to call an instance level method, you would use the dot operator. But because this is a static method, we actually use a double colon in PowerShell. So then you can just type part of the method name, uh, set environment variable. And if you use your arrow keys to go down and select the set environment variable method before you've completed it, hit control space, it'll actually show you the method signature. So you can see the method signature that's actually being generated based off of metadata in the .NET class library is actually the same as the documentation, which is good, right? We, we want the documentation and the class library to be consistent. So uh, let's go ahead and just hit tab to complete that. And then we're going to specify a variable name like first name, and then we'll change it to Billy Bob. So basically we're gonna set an environment variable called first name. We're gonna set it to Billy Bob as the value. And so that'll work, right? If, if we just hit F8 to run that, sure enough, it works just fine. I can pull it using env first name, right? So that works just fine, but we wanna persist it. And so what we're gonna do is reference the system dot environment variable target so that's a .NET enumeration. And then .NET enumerations have um, values that you can reference on them. So to, to reference those, we do another double colon. And you can see that we just get the IntelliSense here for machine process and user, which again is consistent with the documentation that we looked at earlier when we pulled up this environment variable target enumeration. So the options we have are machine process and user. So I'll go ahead and just specify user for now. Uh, since I'm running Visual Studio Code as a non-administrator, I probably don't even have permission at the moment to set a machine level variable, but uh, we can take a look at that in a second. Okay, so I hit F8 on that line now that we've specified the environment variable target of user, and nothing should have changed for the local process, right? It's still set to Billy Bob. We set it earlier on a per process level, but let's go ahead and fire up a new separate PowerShell process now. And let's do $env first tab, and it auto-completes the first name property. And sure enough, it's set to Billy Bob as we would expect. So that's basically how you can set an environment variable from PowerShell dynamically uh, and persist it in your user configuration. Now, keep in mind as well that I am just hard coding the variable name and the variable value. So you could actually you know, di dynamically insert your own values for the variable name as well as the values. Um, but that's, you know, for, for the sake of testing and demonstration, using just static strings is perfectly fine. Now, one other thing I would point out is that you would typically, man if you were manually customizing your environment variables, you would probably do that by going to the Windows X. Uh, so on my keyboard, if you hit Windows X, go to System, and then in Windows 10, they kind of buried it a little bit deeper. So you actually have to go down to uh, System Info, and then that pops open the, the, the real system dialog that most of us are used to from previous versions of Windows. And then if you go to advanced system settings and then environment variables, you have up here at the top are my user profile environment variables. And then down here you have the system-wide kind of global environment variables. So as you can see, sure enough, uh, this first name uh, environment variable has correctly been set from PowerShell. So that's just kind of a visual mechanism that you can use to validate that it actually did take effect. Uh, the other thing that you can do is also check the registry as well. Um, so, you know, a lot of Windows settings like environment variables are stored in the registry. So just keep that in mind. Um, there's as Oftentimes, there's multiple ways to accomplish the same objective, but I just wanted to show you this API because it's a little bit more PowerShell and .NET friendly. And if you're a C-sharp developer, for example, you can use this same class and static method to set your environment variables. So that's all I've got for this video today. Um, pretty straightforward, pretty easy to do. You can use this in your scripts, uh, so check it out. 
Thanks for watching this video, and if you'd like to support this channel, please subscribe to the channel, please leave a like or thumbs up on the video, and please leave a comment in the on the video to let me know what other kind of content you would like to see on this channel. I do have some plans to create some content outside of just PowerShell-related content, so uh, kind of expanding into some other technical areas as well. So let me know your thoughts on that as well. I'm toying with some ideas like other automation tools that aren't necessarily PowerShell, get a little bit more into the Linux side of things and kind of explore deeper there. So we'll see you in the next video. Until then, cheers.